Hello my friends, welcome to r slash Entitled People, where people truly believe that the world revolves around them. Guys, in this episode, you're going to hear two stories. The first is a crazy lady who makes a huge assumption and ends up trying to kidnap a child. The second story is an entitled aunt expecting OP and siblings to take care of their entitled mother. Guys, both stories are absolutely outrageous, and for some of you, it may even make your blood boil. So get ready for a wild ride. I hope you stay for the stories today, and do hit that subscribe button, guys, for future stories. This first story is titled, Crazy Lady Accuses Me of Kidnapping My Son and Tries to Kidnap Him From Me. First, a little backstory. I'm a mixed ethnicity individual. I've been confused for many races over the course of my 29 years on this planet, but I'm literally Caucasian and African American. Usually it can be figured out, but the difference with me is my father is the Caucasian, so therefore my hair is straight. I'm originally from Texas, and I'm usually confused for being Mexican, but now I live in Massachusetts and I've never had an issue with anyone concerning my race, until this day. Also, I'm married to a Caucasian woman who had a child before we were married. His father's not in his life as much, and I took responsibility, because I love this woman, and I love the little boy as if he were my own. He's four now, and I've been in his life since he was one. Anyway, on to the story. My wife needed a few things from the grocery store, and she needed to run a few more errands, and usually, she just goes and knocks things out herself because I'm sleeping, since I work night shifts. But this particular day, I happen to be awake, and I offered to go for her. She works hard, and she does a lot, so I definitely felt it was necessary to do something for her so she could just relax for the day. I took my son with me so she could rest up and just take it easy, and it gave me time to spend with my son for some bonding. We completed all of the errands, which went smoothly, and then headed to the grocery store to finish up our day. My son, being a typical four-year-old, was full of energy, running ahead of me, laughing, and speaking to everyone he comes across, which I generally don't mind, as long as he doesn't hit anyone and stays within eye view. As I'm making my way down an aisle looking for canned corn, my son jogs to the end of it, when an older lady is entering at the other end. My son's being the sweet social butterfly he is, approached and exclaims and excited, Hi, I'm Four, and Ryan. Bless his little heart. The lady looks down and says, Well, hello there. You shouldn't be running around unattended. Let's go find your parents. I didn't think anything of her statement because I assumed she just hadn't seen me. I shouted, Ryan, come back here, bud, please. He excitedly runs back towards me and starts turning in circles because, you know, he's four. I'm still searching the shelves as the lady walks past me and stops behind me. Again, I think nothing of it because it's a grocery store and you have to share the aisles. I turn my basket around and start to walk towards the front cash registers when this lady literally blocks my path. I say excuse me and try to walk around her and she moves her cart in front of me again. I honestly thought she was just getting confused and said excuse me once again and tried one more time to go around and she blocks my path. The following conversation ensues. I said, um, sorry about that, we'll get out of your way. The lady says, oh, I don't think so. You're not going anywhere with that child. You mean my son? That's not your child. He's white and you're Mexican. You probably didn't even know his name until he said it to me. Me, baffled that this is even happening, said, sure, whatever, lady. Can, can you just move? My wife's at home and anxiously waiting for us. She then says, Stop your lies. You're not taking him anywhere, you pervert. The whole time, my son's standing close to me, holding my leg, because he was honestly getting scared. And I was getting angry, because I hadn't had much sleep, and I have a short fuse anyway. I told her, As you can see, he's standing close to me because he trusts me, and you're scaring him, so how about you buzz off? The lady ignores me and says, Come on now, sweetie, come with me. Thankfully, my son was able to communicate to her that he wasn't going anywhere with her, but she was having none of it. 
she literally grabbed my son and begins pulling him away. It caught me off guard because I honestly could not fathom what was actually happening. My son starts screaming loudly because he was scared, and this lady's just like, Don't worry, sweetie. He won't hurt you, I promise. As she begins to pull him away, suddenly, I snap back into reality, and I begin to chase after this crazy winch. While running through the store, I yell for people to stop her and that she's kidnapping my son, and thankfully a worker stops her before she makes the exit, and she says, Why are you stopping me? This Mexican here is trying to kidnap my grandson. My son is literally bawling his eyes out and extending his arms calling out for me. The lady was relentless and would not let go of my son. I laughed a little, I'm not gonna lie, because the situation is ridiculous. At this point, a manager shows up and asked what's going on. And the lady spoke before me and says, This pervert is trying to kidnap my grandson, and I was just trying to escape. I told her, That's my son, you freaking psycho. Now let him go. The manager didn't know who to believe. I don't blame him, as he was caught in a weird situation, so I pulled my phone out and showed him pictures of me and my son that dated over a year ago as proof. This lady would not give up and accused me of faking the pictures. Like, how would you do that exactly? I'll never know, but whatever. Sadly, there were two other ladies taking the psycho side and said I was attempting to kidnap my own son because there's no way we were a family because of our different skin tones. One even called the police, which I was happy about because I knew they would be able to review the security cameras. I called my wife to see if she would come to the store to get the situation cleared up quicker. As soon as I told her what was going on, she zoomed to the store. She got there about the same time as the police, and the crazy ladies were giving their statements to the cops when my wife walked in. As soon as she walked in, my son goes, Mama, help! My wife is a true mama bear, and she immediately flew into a rage when she saw this lady holding my son. The lady says to her, Sorry, sweetie, I was just trying to protect him from this pervert over here. Lady number two says, Yeah, we saw him trying to kidnap him, but this lady saved him. The cop looks at the lady and is confused. The officer says, I thought this was your grandson. And my wife says, I have no idea who that lady is. She takes out her phone and shows the officer a picture of my mother-in-law. Lady number one says, Okay, I'm sorry he's not my grandson, but I was only trying to protect him from this dirty pervert over here. Lady number two says, Yeah, I witnessed the whole thing. He snatched that child and tried to run away with him, but this lady stopped it. Lady number three says, Yeah, I saw it too. He needs to be arrested. And you, pointing to my wife, should be thankful that this lady was here to save your son because you obviously just let him loose wherever. My wife asked who they were talking about again, and all three crazy ladies pointed at me. To which my wife said, Oh, you mean my husband? Lady number one is shocked and said, Husband? My wife replied, Yeah, who do you think called me and got me here so fast? I presented my ID to the officer and the manager, and my wife did the same. We also showed pictures of us on our phones to prove that we really are a family. The cop nodded in approval and handed us our phones back and jotted down a few notes. The three ladies, for some reason, still kept trying to say that this was all fake, and my wife was in on the kidnapping and said we needed to be arrested. My wife lost it at this point and let off some colorful words that I won't repeat here, but she definitely got her point across. Then the nail in the coffin came for the psycho trio. The officer turned to the manager and asked, Sir, do the cameras work here? The manager responded, Yes, we have them inside and out. And the officer asked to go review them. The three ladies' faces went pale, like ghostly pale. The officer reviewed the outside camera as I pulled into the parking lot and saw me take my son out of the car. And then as I went up and down the aisles, and most importantly, the instance of the woman snatching up my son and beginning to run. Upon his return, he asked, Would you like to press charges? And I said, absolutely. Lady 1 was charged with attempted kidnapping, false imprisonment, providing of false police reports, and child endangerment. The other two were also charged with providing a false police report as well. 
To make matters worse for Lady One, my son bruises easily, and she left some terrible spots on him from where she was grasping him, but he's fine. I have a court date later this year, but I'm not sure when because of COVID. The officer will be following up with me in a few weeks. Sorry for the length. Guys, this lady was absolutely crazy. I can't imagine how terrified Opie's child was. And it also didn't help that three others took her side and called the police on OP too. It's... the whole situation's ridiculous. She basically tried to kidnap him. And looking over the comments in this post, a lot of people have been in similar situations. Like this guy that says, It's likely real, my dad's white, and my mom's black. Trust me, she got accused of kidnapping me all the time. Absolutely insane. This next story is titled, Entitled Aunt Wants Me to Support My Entitled Mom. So this happened last year. A little backstory. My mom has mooched off of people her entire life. From purposely getting pregnant with me when she was 17, by lying to my dad that she was on the pill, to living with my grandparents the last 25 years after my dad divorced her when I was three. There is a lot of stories I could go into, but suffice it to say that she only wants people to take care of her, from money to cleaning, and thinks she does no wrong and she's the victim. She often screams at my grandparents when they ask her to get a job to help since they had declining health and medical bills piling up. She would say things like, I do a lot around here, I pay for some of the food, with her food stamps. Or she would say, everyone always blames me for things, and goes on a tangent trying to guilt trip and bully. My granddad, now that my grandmom has passed, wouldn't put up with it anymore and sold his house to move into a nursing home, leaving my mom, aunt, and my uncle without some place to live. This was finalized about four months ago. My mom with two kids is now living in a leaking, barely functioning camper in a Walmart parking lot. My dad tried his best to shield my brother and I from most of the insanity growing up, even spending $20,000 in legal fees to try to get full custody. But it doesn't stop her from asking for money, from trying to crash at our places, etc, etc. Eventually, I moved to a different state, and she still doesn't have my address. So, on to the entitlement tale. One year ago, I got a text from my aunt. It reads as follows. I'm going to be a little harsh with you at this moment. You and your brother need to stop depending on everyone else to take care of your mother. Dad will be moving into an independent living facility within the next month, and she is using dad living for free here and not contributing in any way. The house stinks in the area where she lives, and it reeks of stale cigarettes and foot fungus and B.O. She needs to get her act together, and if need be, y'all need to help her get it together. Dad has been in the hospital for the last few days, and is now at a rehabilitation center. He needs to have it stress-free at this house, and he needs to be able to sell this house. The one main complaint of people that would come to look at the house was the smell that was in the house. I apologize if this seems rude, but at this point, I really don't know what else to do. You and your brother need to step up and start taking care of your mother. Your mother is always boasting that you make $70,000 a year, but yet, you never help her out. You never give her any money, and you are to take care of your parents, just like they're supposed to take care of you. If she doesn't find a way to get out of the house within the next week or so, she will be without a house. And I'm sorry, but that's the cold, honest truth. The truth of the matter is, she will not have a place soon. Your brother needs to help where he can, and so do you. And if you want to start a fight in this house, then complain to your mama. But I hope you don't, and you do the right thing. Now, understand that my brother and I have spent our lives trying to make something of ourselves. My brother just got on his feet, and a good job in his early 20s, and I just moved to a different state and started to get my life back together after some incidents. I'm 27 at the time. My aunt does the same things that my mom does. She has two kids there and a husband. She refuses to work and thinks she's better than everyone and a really annoying religious. I decide not to text back. At the time, I was furious because she knows how hard we've worked to be where we are and is still asking us to support our entitled mom. So, I decide to copy and paste the text to my dad, and here's where some things get ugly. 
This is his text to my aunt. He says, Hi, it's dad. Sorry to hear about your dad. He's a good man, and I've always liked him no matter what was going on, and he was always nice to me. Now that being said, it's very sad what's going on with mom and her two kids. Although she's had plenty of time to get her life together and did nothing, I've done everything in my power to make sure that my kids didn't get sucked down by her and told them this day would come and she'll want a leech off of them. Well, I didn't raise my kids to be dumbasses unlike your parents did. Sorry, but the truth is that it's their fault that every one of you are so stupid. I mean, all four of you are worthless and stupid, and I saved my kids and helped them to have a good life, and it's not their responsibility to raise their worthless ass mom. It's sink or swim, and I would advise you to put her on the streets and let her swim on her own. Do not dare guilt trip my kids who are fully aware that this day was coming, and the answer is no. They aren't dumb enough to let it happen to them. That stupid bitch will suck the life out of my kids, and I will not let that happen. So leave my kids out of it, and put her on the street where she belongs. I didn't raise stupid kids, and both of them are smarter than all four of you dumbasses put together. So take your guilt trip and shove it up your ass. Have a nice day. After that, I think my aunt took an exception to the text, and absolutely blew up my phone saying, I don't deserve this treatment. Is this what I get as your aunt? You've become really selfish. It's been a year later, and I have not texted her back. I will not get dragged into the toxicity and support my able-bodied mother who doesn't want to do anything but get handouts. OP's dad really laid the smack down on the aunt and mom. I get that children should help out their parents when needed, but asking your nieces and nephews to fully support their mother, who doesn't want to do much in life, is really too much to ask. Why should they put their lives on hold to help their mom who isn't willing to try? I know people in their early 30s and 40s who are in the same boat. They've put their lives on hold to help their parents who just sit on disability and do nothing. I know I may seem like a bad person to say this, but guys, there's a point in your life where you gotta let your parents do their own thing and you gotta live your own life. But that's just my opinion. What do you guys think of the stories today? And that wraps up another episode of r slash Entitled People. If you guys enjoyed hanging out with me today and hearing these stories, do hit that thumbs up because it really helps me. I don't know what it helps with, but it really does. And if you aren't subscribed, do hit that subscribe button for future stories about Entitled People. And I'll see you guys in the next one.